HQ of the record label, Browns of Records. Um, apparently, a, approximately the same sort of amount of low finest as defective ones once. Um, and one has to start off, you know, at base level, and this is base level. There you go, that's where Emily sits. We're quite early right now, this is nine, nine o'clock in the morning on a, on, a, on a Wednesday, a few weeks before Christmas. And uh, yeah, this is it. Anyway, let's go through to my room. Well, the first of several of Charles' rooms. This has basically become my more music um, base away from the the masses that work at uh, away from the uh, the masses that work at Browns Records. Um, this is where I escaped. Um, this is where she's now got. This is the only room with television in it, and I have to tell you that it does have Santa and Sky Sports because I need that in my life. That is very important. And. Um, this is a, a, a picture I just got recently from um, Swifty. It's an original Sun Ra, and it's painting. It's not a print because he normally does a lot more stuff with graphics and, and computer-generated stuff. But he's actually painted that, so I'm quite proud of that because I think Swifty is very good. Um, but again, I've just thrown this together. This is where I, I practice badly here, and I still haven't put a lot of paintings up. But there you go. Um, here's my first of my oops of my record rooms. Um, it's all a bit manic. As you can tell, um, I never quite know where anything is. Um, and this is basically a selection of varied, um, this is a selection of varied um, um, musical nuggets. Um, it's really difficult, you know, from hip hop, you know, some hip hop stuff in there, random soul albums in Latin, that's all kind of compilations. Um, old school disco 12s, bit of old talking loud. Look, we've got some talking loud stuff in here. Talking loud, get yourself together. Quite a rare one. Um, yeah, this is just stuff I've been playing. This is kind of what I've been recently playing. Um, but the majority of the music is um, downstairs. And it's also where my studio is. This is a, a painting drawn by Paul Bradshaw um, of, um, of Straight No Chaser magazine. Good guy. I'm not really one for silver discs or things like that, although I do have a couple here. This used to be a cupboard and it's now become a kind of 12 inches type of thing. And this is where I throw a lot of my CDs around, which is a bit bad. Um, mainly old school, um, sort of 80s vinyls and sort of going into early house. All hip hop, all hip hop. Yeah, I guess I've got a few, you know what I bought recently? I'll tell you what I bought recently, which is quite interesting. Um, I, I went to Nicky Holloway. Nicky Holloway. Nicky Holloway was selling me loads of his old records. So I've got, oh no, that's all hip hop. Yeah, I've got a box, a box load of Nicky Holloway stuff. So this is Nicky Holloway's handwriting, if you were wondering about that. Always minus, never breaks an um, and this is where I record a lot of my radio shows. This is my studio. This is where I have recorded in this room over a thousand shows. Um, and this is basically you know, what is known as the Brownswood basement. And um, it's mainly jazz in here, I have to say. Mainly jazz and rare. The nuggets tend to be in this room. Um, all jazz. I mean, when I say jazz, I mean, you know, jazz and associated forms. And here I'm talking about um, just the, 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 the quality soul music um, and you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, that is all drum and bass. I don't know why I've got so much drum and bass and you need to change that. A few 10 inches. Single, seven inches everywhere. I mean, don't ask me. Don't ask me where to find anything. There's been a lot of late night sessions in the studio. Um, you know, all nighters. Um, but that's sort of less um, common. Um, in 2007, but I do love it. I do love it. It's actually quite neat and tidy at the moment. I know it probably doesn't look like it, but this is about as tidy as it gets. Um, I'm a random DJ. Um, I'm not somebody who's really, you know, who writes down the BPMs of every record. I don't have it in alphabetical order. 
um, I literally just kind of, it just keeps growing as it goes and I've found that recently I've been giving a lot of music away because a lot of the 12 inches and the music you get you know, week in, week out, a lot of that is sort of, it's not really, it hasn't really got the depth to be something that should be in your collection in three years' time. I mean, a few bits, obviously, but a lot of stuff I play or I take, I listen to, and I take it straight down to the charity shop or, or whatever, you know, that's how I deal with it. But the jazz and the rare stuff, or the rare soul or dance music, any good, any good house music, anything good I keep, obviously, or anything that's kind of got a lot of stability, which is generally about producers who I like and admire. And even if I don't necessarily think that they've done the best thing, I tend to keep their stuff because I've always got a feeling that you could go back to it. But a lot of stuff, you know, I'm, I, I do throw it out as soon as I get it, really. Otherwise, it would be. Otherwise, there would be no room here. Literally, you know. I mean, this is actually the comp. The collection has retained a certain um, sort of shape and um, and number over the last um, few years, you know, because before there was a rapid increase, especially when I started working at Radio 1, I used to get so much music sent to me. And not only just sort of jazzy stuff or, or black music stuff, I was getting everything because I think, you know, the rock people thought, oh, there's a chance that Giles might play something. And then I was getting electronic guys thinking, yeah, you know, he's cutting edge. And I was getting the sort of old school people, the hip hop, the soul, the funk, the jazz, all sending me stuff. So I was getting a lot, you know, and, uh, but now less so, which is good. I mean, I still get a lot of stuff, but obviously now it's more downloads and it's this link, that link, and you know, you get a chance to check it out before you put it out of your computer. Actually, that's the problem as well, because I tend to get a lot of stuff sent to me now on, on downloads, and then I like it, and then I don't actually ask them to send me a finished copy, and unless I go to a record shop, which is becoming less and less common now, which is really bad. I need to sort that out. And I used to go to shops like once, twice a week. Now I'm maybe once, twice a month. So don't, yeah, it's bad. I will re-support my shops because you know, um, because shops like Soul Jazz and uh, and and, and um, release the groove, not release the groove. Yeah, Vinyl Junkies, um, shops like that. They need support because a lot of them are running out. And uh, Monica, um, you know. Yeah, so support your local record shop actually. And that's also why I haven't actually gone to Serato. I mean, I would do Serato and I think it's a good idea just to be able to load all your music in so you've got a safety net. But going out and playing on it, I don't know. I still like playing records. I still like playing CDs. It makes me feel more part of it. I look at DJs playing Serato. I do, I do get a bit envious sometimes because I look at them just walking to the club. And they've got nothing, they've got nothing, and they just put their computer on. I mean, they're a bit of a pain in the ass because if you're DJing before or after, they're always fiddling about with the mixer and it's annoying, and they'll put you off your track, and they're kind of a bit embarrassed about it, so there's a bit of an awkward vibe backstage on the decks. But apart from that, you know, once they plug in, you know, they don't, they don't even need headphones, it's all done for them. I don't know if I'm into that, personally. But on the other hand, it's kind of useful because it means that you don't have to have that. I mean, I'm an original DJ who we'll, would we'll go to Heathrow with four record boxes back in the day. Four. Well, definitely two heavy metal ones with acetates in them. So they were really heavy. That's why I'm so muscular, as you can see. Well, in fact, that's a good example of a box that I used to carry. Look, that's a big, weighty bit of metal box, that is. And I used to have two of those full of acetates. I would never get away with that anymore. Now, imagine walking into an airport queue with that. I mean, they just make you go to the back of the queue again, they'd have to go to excess luggage and you'd have to fill up loads of forms and uh, sign your life away just to carry those on, on a flight to Berlin or something. So, in that respect, Serato has been a real good one, but I haven't been doing that. I've been more of a CD person. Um, and that's really the studio, basically. Um, yeah. CDs and things. Oh, you just stepped on my rare records. God, he just stepped on, my God, look, Tribe, this is a really rare record on the floor, Nick Navarro, unbelievable, that's a big fast fucking walking tune, yeah. and it's the part two on the seven inch, never came out that, I think.